and die by the choices we make. So it goes in Nintendo's long-running Fire Emblem series, which takes its tried-and-true strategic gameplay on its initial outing to the Wii with Fire Emblem Goddess of Dawn. The Fire Emblem games didn't start appearing on Western shores until the release of Fire Emblem on the GBA, which was actually the seventh game in the series. In fact, most American gamers had never even heard of the series until Nintendo brought two of its more popular characters, Marth and Roy, into the ring for Super Smash Bros. Melee on the Nintendo GameCube. Since then, the series has been translated into multiple languages, so gamers with an itch for complex storytelling and chess-like battles of swords and sorcery could enjoy it the world over. Fire Emblem games are known most for their strict difficulty, stemming from the fact that once a character dies, they're dead and gone for the rest of the game. You won't find any Phoenix Downs or Life Potions in Fire Emblem, which can make battles frustrating for perfectionists, but gives the game a much more tense and decisive feel. Losing a character you've worked the whole game towards leveling up will have you reaching for the reset button time and time again, but those who don't mind this single caveat, the game presents a tough but fair challenge. Goddess of Dawn picks up where the last game, Path of Radiance, left off. This time around, you're in control of Soth and his love interest, Micaiah, as they're fleeing from a tyrannical empire to a mass resistance army to counteract it. Along the way, you'll befriend allies with unique abilities who will join you on your quest. Their help will be a welcome asset to players who lose companions and need a few good replacements. Battles take place on both small and large scale grid maps, and each character is limited to a different specific range which they can move within each turn. Using your army effectively by setting up attacks and defending choke points in an effort to overthrow your enemy's ranks is the key to victory. Like many Japanese RPGs, there are a couple of rock-paper-scissors-style battle systems in place to add some strategic depth. In Melee, swords beat axes, axes beat lances, and lances beat swords. In Magic, fire beats wind, wind beats thunder, and thunder beats fire. Remembering these relationships will go a long way to keeping your party alive during difficult skirmishes, but only skilled playing will see you through. For a little extra help, characters can also be upgraded to more advanced classes using special items, allowing them to wield more weapons and deal more damage. While Goddess of Dawn maintains the gameplay from past games in the series, a few things have changed. Certain characters with an affinity for one another can execute stronger attacks as long as they're near each other during battle. The graphics also seem to be slightly improved when compared to Path of Radiance on the GameCube. we might have a little extra power after all. We gamers looking for a good tactical RPG should look no further than Fire Emblem Goddess of Dawn to satisfy their strategic gaming appetite. Although Nintendo hasn't set an American release date yet, we'll have more for you once we get a localized version of the game for our RPG-starved Wii.